Hi, welcome to of making a grunt plugin. And please catch up on part one on exactly what I'm doing here. As a quick, quick recap, I am taking this uh, Bootstrap Chrome extension, which has a little in a piece of it is a way to automatically reload the Chrome extension when you change a file. Well, that's going to be done through a watch task when you change a file. And then you're going to make these two files in the root of the Chrome extension directory. One is going to be reload.js, one's going to be reload.html. That's what I'm using. This is Coffee and Jade. So let me dive. Oh, well, let me just go over what I ended up with and what we need to do is make this reload HTML file with a timestamp and that's what I did in the last episode and it also we also created a test that ran I'm gonna run it again here and it's working so let's continue on with the next step of making our grunt plugin and that will be let's test custom options um, you know you may not have your your Chrome extension maybe in a different directory like a not just a, a, a single directory but maybe you'll have uh, multiple depths in your root directory and that's what we want to do with this plugin we want to allow the user to put it where the extension directory is their development environment extension directory so to do that, we can allow custom options, and basically you change the extension dir to do that. Right now we're just doing temp, but let's test the a custom option, and let's just do something like temp dev, something like that. And we're going to run the test. We should get some red. Yes, we do. And we're going to need to go to the our tests here. And under custom options, let's put that directory. So let's do extension dir. And we'll do temp dev. OK. Let's go back and run the test. OK. There we go. Okay, passes. So next, let's test making the reload.js file, which also needs to be made in that extension dir. Let's run the test, get some red, got the red. And so let's check this out, reload. It's reload.coffee here. One of the things I noticed and if you check this out we need to reference the reload.html but we're making the reload HTML dynamic and flexible by having the extension dir being set where the user wants it how do we get this reference which is going to be defined over here into this reload.js file that is we're going to want to transfer over uh, to the Chrome extension. Well, we can use grunt template to do that. Grunt template will take variables here and will take an object and will process them within the text similar to other templates like ERB and Ruby. So that's what we're going to use to to solve that problem and I'm going to take some copied code and in the task file just to keep things simple for me when I was making this but also for the screencast I'm in the task the directory I'm going to put reload.js TPL and I'm gonna paste some code in here and you can see here we have the reload.file uh, reload.html directory here we're gonna point that variable 
right there. Now we have to do another step to get it into the template. So let's begin to create this reload.js. Okay, so let's just copy this line and we'll call it reload.js. Reload.js there. Copy this line too. Oops. And we can just put in here some simple stuff. Oh, I'm getting a uh, got too many parentheses there. And I can just run this test and we should get a passing. Okay, we do not. I think that is because we need to do that here also. Okay, let's run the test again. Okay, we still have a failure. Why is that? Okay, we're getting expected one assertion. Oh, I see. We need to change the expectations to two here. All right, let's run it again. Should get some green. There we go. We got the green back. Now that's not that useful a test because you can see that we just put some dummy stuff in there. We want to be able to test that this pre-processing we're about to do is going to work. So let's do a new test for that. And let's just copy this one here. And let's call it process JS template. Let's make one expectation. So we're going to want to grab a string from going to read in the temp reload.js. We want to make sure it was pre-processed successfully. So to do that, we're going to let's match the string to a regular expression of why don't we do reload dot html as the regular expression and we'll put in here reload js was successfully pre-processed save it uh, incidentally the last argument is your comment of your test, what it's supposed to do in node unit. And the reason we're looking for and going to test reload.html is inside of the reload.js is because in the template here there is no reload.html. It's going to be loaded in through this right here. So if it says reload.html, we know that the pre-processing was successful. And let us take a look at the documentation here. So what have we got to... Let me just copy and paste here. And okay, so you put a string in, then it's a data object, and that another object goes inside of that. Okay, so... Let's paste that in. Let's call it reload JS source. And we're going to do a grunt file read because we got to take this template and put it into a string. And that is going to be the reload. JS right here. That's our file, reload.js. 
and in the data object okay what are we calling we're calling oops okay so we're calling this reload files so that's the variable we need to put into into the process so that's going to be an object so reload file and that's going to be the we need to put the path to the reload HTML which is right there reload.html excuse me reload HTML reload HTML and save okay here so we're going to write out to reload JS and this is going to be the reload source that gets processed. So reload JS source right here. This is creating, doing the pre-processing, making the JS file and we're going to write it. Make, we're going to make a, a regular reload JS from the template and the source is going to get pumped in through there. Save it, and let's run the tests. Okay, we get a failure. Um, here the failure is from JS lint, and we're missing a semicolon in line 24. All right, let's go back to 24, and we're missing a semicolon here at the end. Let's rerun the tests. Okay, we get green. Uh, oops, no, we don't get green take a look over here. We, so we're getting, uh, the green is coming from the clean tests. Right there, clean temp, okay. So, but here we get, we're getting a failure. Say unable to read temp, reload. Okay. So, okay, here is the problem. But no, we, we don't want to re read reload JS. We want to reload read reload dot JS dot TPL file. We want to reload. We want to read the template file in for grunt template process and put that variable in there. Okay, so let's rerun the test here. Okay, now we're still unable to read the reload JS TPL and that is because oh okay this runs in the context of the grunt file so the grunt file is running these tests so we have to reference from the directory of the grunt file so it would be tasks like that so let's rerun the tests okay bingo we got them green. Now you can also see the, it, only on the beginning of the test run does it delete the temp directory. So we can see what was made in the temp directory also. Just a, we have the test checking, but let's just check here manually. And you can see we do have that interoperation being done there's the temp reload directory. So we have the test to prove it, but we're just taking a quick peek. Um, and the files are still in that temp directory until you do your next test run. So this is a great place to stop. We're going to go into a part three. And we've made some progress, albeit slowly, thanks to a lot of my errors. But um, again, thanks for watching, and stay tuned for part three.